Hello again. We have our gloves on today, and that only means one thing. We're doing f***ing <coughs> surgery. We've got our sensor watch, obviously. We are stuffing this guy into the F91W. Just a little recap, you might ask, hey, this is a perfectly fine watch. What the <coughs> f*** are you doing? Well, hot take. I kind of hate this watch. Is this thing the people's watch? Absolutely. Does it do everything a regular watch should do? Absolutely. Can it do better? I mean, yeah, for how cool this thing looks, you kind of expect a little bit more. It's like going back and playing in 64 games and not realizing how janky the gameplay actually was. I think people romanticize this watch just a little too much. Without further, further ado, we've got half an hour today uh, and I am going to tear this thing apart. Let's get started. Uh, we'll go with the obvious stuff that I've got on my table today. We've got a screwdriver. We've got tweezers. We got the donor watch. So I've got the F91W here. You can apparently use the A158 and the A159. Both use the 593 module. Anything that uses the 593 module should be direct swappable with this guy. Uh, it does not work with electroluminescent lights, so keep that in mind. We are doing this the right way today. Uh, I don't entirely know what I'm doing, but we are soldering. So we've got a little bit of flux here. Uh, we've got some solder wick, and we've also got some fine soldering wire. The fine stuff is going to make your life a lot easier because we're dealing with some pretty tiny stuff, and I've got some big fat fingers. One other thing that I've got today is masking tape. This will just protect the screen as you're working on the watch. So let's get started. We've got about half an hour to get this fucking thing done. Put a little bit on the screen. This makes your life really easy because you can just slide it around and you don't really care what's happening. So we're going to rush through this. We've got a couple of screws to take off. Put that in there. I'm like weirdly nervous because I don't enjoy soldering. Yeah, it ain't for me. Uh, anything that requires fine motor skills is not my kind of activity. We've got the back off of it. That's the first step. The other, whoop, the other is this little tiny gasket sitting on there. Uh, it's got a couple points where you can just grab it, but if you just roll your tweezers under it, and just be careful not to snag it on anything. We'll just drop it in here with our screws. Next, we're going to pop this module out. It's nice and easy. You just get your screwdrivers in there, stick it down under one of the pushers. Easy does it. Now we've got four little clips on the outside. Don't know if you can see that with the focus, but we've got four little clips on the outside. All you have to do is just be gentle. Just pop it off its little keepers. Also try not to stab the display. I'm all fired up on caffeine right now. I think I've had four cups of coffee today. Some people might argue that's a bit of a problem. And uh, you know what? I might agree with them. Okay, so just to prevent finger tr fingerprints and stuff from getting on this display, we're gonna keep that baby protected too. We want that screen. Even though the LCD sucks, we want that screen. Uh, maybe turn it over and just keep dust from getting in it. But we've got all that stuff there. Here is everything you need. So there's a little bit of like adhesive you can see there. If you're struggling to get the battery off, that's the only thing holding it in place. We don't really care about that, but what we do care about is this battery, this little spring-loaded thing here. So what we're going to do is just flip it over so you can see the circuit board side. And then give that hole a little, a little poke. Boom, it should just come right out easily. Uh, if it doesn't, don't force it, don't bend it. There we go. So we will put that aside for now as well in our little cup. What do we need from this board? Well, we need to get that little pad off of it. As you can see, 
we've got our two boards here. Both are completely identical in size. Uh, we've got similar pads on both. Flip it over. We know which one's the top of the display because that one has um, that one has all of our contacts for the LCD. What we need is that buzzer. Uh, so we're going to desolder that. All right, now what I've just grabbed is a little tiny Q-tip. Uh, you could probably just use a regular Q-tip for it, but we're going to get some flux on there ahead of time. Just dab it on that contact pad where we're going to put this. Now, for desoldering, we'll just be able to pop this off nice and easy. I'm holding the pin in my I'm holding the pin in my tweezers. All right, it should just release when it melts. There we go. Off she comes. We can use our soldering wick to get rid of some of that. I don't know if you can see this. but we now have something clean that we can fit through the guide hole and insert onto this buzzer. We are going to insert that into the hole. They've uh, kindly provided us with a guide hole uh, to help us insert this and keep it straight. Uh, however, good Lord, I have overestimated my coordination skills. Maybe this is why people use tweezers, I don't know. Okay, uh, we've got that resting on the board, kinda. Uh, I think that's relatively secure. So now we need to solder it. Uh, and to solder it, we need, we need solder. Let's grab a little bit of solder. And get this thing on there. I think we've successfully transplanted our alarm. How cool is that? All right, I'm gonna turn this off before I burn myself. Cause that is very, that is a very likely thing for me to do. So now we basically just need to do everything in reverse. So we've got, we've got our LCD. We've got our board. Now what we need to do is just place it back on there. Line the pins up. Easy as that. And then, before I forget, we need to put this back in. So get those back through the holes. And because we've got tape on it, you can remember which way it went in. So there we go. Should just go in nicely, don't force it. Uh, also make sure there's a little bit of flex on the top there. Then, get your battery cradle. Round side up at the top. Flat side at the bottom to make room for that buzzer. So you can literally just make a little sandwich here. And just try to get everything lined up. And yeah. Notice those clips. There we go. If you can hold that tape and it doesn't all fall apart, you've done a good job. Now that we know uh, we've done a good job, you might notice this actually works. Uh, the backlight color is a different color, but you can also step through the faces. So I have already uh, added firmware to this thing. You're not gonna hear you're not gonna hear this thing at all until you put it in the watch. Okay, so you've got your faces. I'm gonna take you through a quick run through of this before we put it back in. But you've got your faces. You've got the main face. You can step through all the others that you've added. 
But on your main face, you've got your preferences. So you, can, so you can hold it down, and that gets you into your main preferences. So setting the time, minute, hour, second, time zone, year, date, all that. Uh, yeah, time zone. Hit that next button again. You should get some other options. So you can do 12 hour time or 24 hour time. Uh, you can turn your beeps on and off, and you can select that option through this right pusher here. Uh, you're basically cycling through these with the light. So you got timeout. If it's sitting on one of the other faces, how long is, how long is it wait before jumping you back? Uh, you've got low energy mode. So it kind of goes into a screensaver where it doesn't show seconds. Uh, it only shows a spinning thing. Uh, I like to keep that jacked up a little bit. Let's say, oh, that's too much. Let's say six hours. Go to the next one. How long do you want that backlight to stay on? Three seconds is pretty nice. So you can go with that. Uh, and now you can change the color. This is the fun part. So if you want to make it red, we just need to dial green to zero and we can crank up red in the next step. Uh, but I found a color that I like and that's green at six and then red at 15. Gets me pretty close, close to the color that comes out of my. Uh, gets me pretty close to the color that comes out of my uh, Royale here, and uh, I think that's a good thing. So we'll set that, and we're back at whatever. You can set this while it's in the watch too. So uh, you might notice a couple cat hairs on everything because I've got a cat. Uh, we actually have four cats in the house. Uh, it's a lot of cats to live with. So what we really need to make sure of is that we push in all of these. Uh, if they're pushed out, you're gonna, wanna, you're gonna have a bad time getting this back in. So just put it in as straight as you can. And it should just go down. If, if you have to use too much force, it's probably not right. Uh, this might be a bit of an issue. I don't know how straight this actually went on. Uh, and this might affect the tone when I put the back of the case on. Um, make sure all of the pushers are clear. Uh, press them all in with your tweezers. Just make sure you're clearing all of the pushers. Uh, truthfully, I think I think we're pretty, pretty well in there. Now, we're gonna put our gasket back so this thing stays waterproof. Uh, if you've got silicon grease, it's probably now a good time to use it. Uh, I don't plan on swimming with this thing, and it's mostly for tinkering, and it's going to make less of a mess for me, personally, uh, if I don't put it back. And we're just going to tuck it in as straight as we can. When we tighten this down, it should just seat. Now we're gonna put the top back on and line it up as nicely as we can. And snug everything up. And here's the fun part. Peel it off and it should work. So you can tell it worked because you can hear a little beep there. That's kind of nice. Sweet. And uh, most importantly, we've got Space Invaders. Whew! Level 2. Alright. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy. Alright, we have just torn this thing apart and swapped brains with the original Casio 593 module. I'd call that operation a success. Also desoldered and resoldered the buzzer. Yeah, I would I would overall call this a huge success. Uh, very happy with how this went. Oddly specific objects. Thank you for making such a cool device. I'm really excited to play around with this thing, and I'll be creating another tutorial probably in the next week or so on how to actually transfer the, the firmware that you've built onto your device, so you can choose your own games and do whatever you want. But yeah, hopefully you learned something. Happy hacking. I hope you have fun with your watch too. See you in the next one.